particularly want to start with measuring food. So you're, you're still getting all your, well, like almost everything from food, right? You don't take any, just vitamin D as I recall. I, I, I take I take vitamin D in the winter here, a thousand I use, and that gets me above um, 30, what is it, 30 nanograms per mil, whatever that lowest cutoff is in almost every study for uh, being deficient. So I'm, I did I did my vitamin D blood test, 25 hydroxy D two months ago, and I was at like 39. So I'm good there in terms of some, some people take way more for vitamin D. Uh, and then I get plenty of sun exposure in the summer. I make, you know, I get a nice uh, little tan, but then I also uh, vitamin B12. Uh, I'm back to taking that. Uh, I took it out for my last blood test, trying to reduce my homocysteine by diet. And uh, it wasn't as good as I expected. Um, but so vitamin B12 is back in there uh, for now. Yeah, but it's all food. All food. Okay, so could, we, could you talk a, a little bit more detail about the process of uh, like weighing the food? And then you, you mentioned uh, a website, which, uh, which I, I think gives you the, the nutrition content of each piece of food. Like how does it, what does that process actually look like? All right. So I have a, a small food scale, $20 food scale, nothing fancy. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I literally weigh everything. Um, every, you know, at this point I, I basically eat pretty close to the same range of foods over a few, few day period. Um, and that's more a combination of trying to eat foods that I like with, uh, foods that seem to be beneficial for my blood biomarkers while minimizing other foods that may not be. Um, and I say minimizing, just using as an example, um, mushrooms. I had them in there for a long time. I was eating about 300 grams a day. And then uh, I noticed that my liver enzymes were trending towards above the high end of the range. And uh, also too many walnuts. Uh, so uh, eating about 70 walnuts a day, 70 grams of walnuts a day. And for whatever reason, the omega-6 in that Seen, and the niacin actually in uh, mushrooms, because mushrooms are a tremendous source of niacin. Um, so I was getting about 45 milligrams, which is three times the RDA. Uh, so for whatever reason, too much niacin, uh, and, but that's pretty much, that's well known, it's effect on, on the liver. Too much niacin, three times the RDA, and too much omega-6 for me, uh, higher higher uh, liver enzymes, very high. Again, over the, ref, the highest, end, uh, highest end of the reference, reference range. So I've had to cut some foods down to try to, again, get at the optimal dose to maximize all of my biomarkers while minimizing, you know, biomarkers going in the wrong direction. So um, yeah, food scale, it goes food scale. And then I log in in chronometer and it doesn't have to be chronometer. There are other apps that will, will do this. Like, I guess my fitness pal can do it and there may be others. So I, I'm not married to any one approach. You know, if someone prefers using a different approach, as long as you get your macro and micronutrient content from the app, whatever it may be, and the individual food amounts, um, as long as you get that data, it, that's the key. So then I take that data and I log it into the Excel file. So I have col e you know, columns for each um, macro and micronutrient, you know, protein, carbs, fat, fiber. Um, and then I track things like total fructose intake because that I, I eat a lot of fruit. So uh, I can eat way too much fruit. And, you know, so tracking fructose intake helps keep an eye on that. Um, and then I track, you know, the individual fats like monounsaturated, omega-3, omega-6, so I try to get detailed with the macros and micros. Uh, so the ma micros, it's everything, all the vitamins and minerals. Uh, so I've got, you know, probably 40 columns for the, that dietary data, macros and micros, and then all of the individual foods going in, you know, all across the board and then with date on the left, right? So I have for each date, I know exactly the macros and micros and the individual food amounts. And each day, each day to log all that, it probably takes me, um, five to seven minutes of my time to actually enter that data. And for some people they're like, oh, I don't have that time. I don't want to make that time, but it's only five to seven minutes of my day. And I actually enjoy it because by, by putting it in manually, you know, I can see my other data that I've had on other days. And, you know, sometimes I'll look at it and be like, and I'll be like, well, I didn't eat enough of that on this day. So, you know, I don't look at five to seven minutes of my day as, as, as a chore. Now the weighing the food, I mean, you know, that takes a little bit more time. I mean, but it isn't hours a day, right? So all right. So then, um, so then I've got my big Excel spreadsheet. And then on another sheet, when I blood test, I do the same thing. I have the date of the blood test and the data for each individual biomarker. And then I take the average dietary intake from between one blood test to the next. So then that data lines up now. So you have the blood test data for that, for that date. And then you have the average intake over that period 
for that blood test. And then as you do that for each blood test, now you have, start to have an Excel spreadsheet or any spreadsheet uh, where you have blood test data that aligns with uh, dietary data and all of the other metrics, you know, the resting heart rate, I, I put that in there too, the sleep data. So I can look at correlations for all of it. Um, yeah. Right. It, yes. Okay. No, I, I can see how you, so does the, what about the quality of the food? Is, does that, is there any way to take that into consideration or, or not? So when you say quality of the food, so I, I mean, I track it. So if, so let's say someone's eating a junk food diet, if they track it and, and you know, I don't want to seem like uh, I never eat junk. Uh, I, in some ways I say all the time that I'm a recovering, I shouldn't even say I'm a recovering because it's like alcoholism. I don't know that you ever actually cure it. Right. So um, I, as a kid, I had a terrible diet. I would eat, you know, a whole box of cakes and cookies and I'd go to the park for three hours and play basketball. So I've always been relatively lean, but my diet hasn't been in the past the high of the highest quality. And then it wasn't until, you know, five to 10 years ago that I was like, I, I, I got to clean it, clean it completely up this once a week cheat day or once a week cheat meal. It doesn't work for me. It leads to binge behavior. So I have to com almost completely shut off uh, any quote unquote processed or junk foods. And I say almost completely because then it seems like I'm not having, you know, what some people interpret as fun because food can be viewed as pleasure. Uh, so when I do eat junk, um, it's after I blood test. So on the day of the blood test, that's my time the, of the day of the blood test and the day after. I, and then after that, I shut it off because if I, if, if I do it more often than that, it becomes, I think about it all the time and, and, uh, using that technique, it's, uh, it helps me manage that, that uh, addiction. Right. So, uh, so yeah, so for my last blood test, uh, you know, November 1st on the day after our blood test that I actually brought with me, uh, I had some Nutella and peanut butter. So I made my own homemade Reese's peanut butter, Reese's peanut butter cups. Nutella is awful though. I mean, it's a sugar bomb and it's, you know, uh, seed oils, which aren't nu nutritionally dense. It's just a calorie bomb with very little nutrition, but it was delicious. So I did that for two days and I didn't do the whole, you know, maybe I had, uh, a thousand calories over two days. And my average intake is probably 5,000 calories. So 25% of my calories over those two days were from junk. But after that, literally it's all whole foods. Um, and pro I'm probably going to do that again. When I blood test, I'm blood testing this upcoming Monday. Uh, the Nutella mixed with peanut butter was so delicious. I'm going to do it again. So, uh, but then, uh, you know, I'm going to go to Brooklyn to see my parents over the, you know, the holidays. Uh, so, you know, the Northeast pizza is pretty fantastic. So I'll probably have a slice of pizza, which I don't normally do. I mean, that's, you know, somewhat a rare thing a couple of times a year. So junk isn't completely eliminated from my diet. It's, it's a once a month or less thing. Now that said, in terms of the quality of my diet, it's exclusively whole food. I'm not drinking fruit juices. I do make smoothies, but it's based on, you know, uh, berries and, and, uh, bananas or, uh, you know, uh, uh, vegetables. It isn't, it isn't with some almond milk or, uh, you know, it isn't any of that. It's whole foods. Now in terms of the, um, you know, so when someone is going on this process, what I, what I usually recommend is, is, uh, okay, you blood test on day one and you're not going to be able to look at correlations because you just don't have any data. So the first step is in, when you track your diet, it's, it's, um, when you're using an app to track your diet, it's making sure you get at least the RDA or what's considered an adequate intake for every vitamin and mineral. So clearing up dietary, potential dietary deficiencies that could negatively affect your biomarkers. So, so you don't have the correlative data. That's an easy thing to do at the beginning. So, um, and actually for some, you know, for some clients that I, that I work with, you know, that's exactly what we do. You know, they'll, they'll send me their chronometer data. I'll say, well, you're not getting enough vitamin E, maybe add more almonds. Uh, and then, so the beginning of the tracking is cleaning up any dietary deficiencies but then the next layer on, uh, of that is, should some nutrients be higher than others? Like for example, my fiber intake is somewhere right now in the 80 to 90 gram per day range, which is three times the RDA. But I do that because the net effect on these quote unquote big picture blood biomarkers is more biomarkers going in the right direction than wrong with these higher fiber intakes. Um, in, conversely, going back to fructose, uh, my, my uh, average fructose intake is about 90 grams per day. And if you look at all the published studies on fructose, that's very high. I mean, the, correl the corollary of that is people drinking these uh, sugar-sweetened drinks. 
uh, that you know you would get to 90 grams per day. Now I'm not doing that. This is exclusively from fruits and vegetables that I get that you know I get fructose. But in my data, I've got the opposite for fructose, where higher levels of fructose are correlated with you know almost all my uh, significant uh, significant biomarkers. And uh, for my last blood test was like six biomarkers going in the wrong direction. And I say again with statistical significance. So with a p value less than 0.05, six going in the wrong direction and only one going in the right direction. Interestingly. If I only focused on my fructose intake, which again, from fruits and vegetables, I, it's correlated with lower glucose. So if I stop there, I would think, oh, eat as much fruit as I want. I'm going to have optimal insulin sensitivity uh, because fructose in that case, is, it's, it's, it's not causing it directly. It's a marker of fruit and vegetable intake, more fruits and vegetables, more fructose, lower glucose in my data. But if I, I didn't stop there, so the full picture is all of these other biomarkers are adversely affected. I've got lower HDL. Uh, and I don't remember all, all the other ones off the top of my head. So, you know, so that goes into the, the idea of what's an optimal, um, you know, macro and micronutrient profile for me. So for now, I'm at uh, about 70 grams of fructose, which is a challenge because I love eating fruit, but compared to my average of 90 grams per day, 70 is, is, a, is a win for now. But uh, so first step is tracking, you know, uh, making sure you're not dietary deficient in any of these macro and micronutrients. The next layer is should I supercharge some of these nutrients? And those are just two examples. There are others like vitamin K, the adequate intake is hundred micrograms, around hundred micrograms per day. But this dietary period, I'm about 1700. And I've been consistently at about 1500 micrograms. So 15 times, you know, what's considered the, the inadequate intake. And again, that's because it's correlated with more biomarkers going in the right direction than wrong. Um, so that's, that's another layer of this too, using, you know, identifying, using your blood test data to personalize your diet, where you're not just going based off RDA, which is intended to prevent disease, but you're using that data to identify what's an actual optimized diet at the, at the end of one level. Right, so I was gonna ask about what your target, so, so you use, you use this, the RDA like as a baseline, generally. Yes. Okay, 